My dear people of God, I have every pleasure tonight to invite us to Luke chapter 18, verse 1 to 8. The book of Luke, the gospel of Luke chapter 18, verse 1 to 8. And then I read from New International Version. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not to give up. He said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about people's thoughts. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea. Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge did. And... With, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and even quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Will he find faith on earth? My own dear people of God, this is the word, the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to you, Lord, Lord. My dear people of God, in this gospel tonight, we see our Lord Jesus using a parable to pass a message to us. Jesus was teaching a parable about the importance of constant prayer. That is, praying without giving up. That is, praying until something happens. <laughs> the widow, in Luke 18, verse 1 to 8, that we read in this very scripture, had a need. And so this widow, in the parable, received her request because of one thing. That thing was persistence. She persevered. She insisted, I must get what I want. It's us. And God is using this opportunity to teach you and me tonight that we also have to be equally constant in prayer. Never giving up because things have not changed. Never giving up because the sky has not started forming a cloud of rain for the harvest. So we are calling on God. So this night, God himself is talking to us. This night, God wants to strengthen us in such a way that we shall not give up. We shall not give up in any form, no matter the situation. No matter the situation, our Lord will always be with his people. Oh, Jesus. <clears throat> My dear brothers and sisters, I just want to believe that this message is for a reason tonight. I just want to believe that God wants to use his own mouth to prepare us for a wonderful message tonight. I want to believe that God wants to talk to somebody tonight. There is somebody that God wants this message to be for tonight. I don't know who is that person. Maybe it is you hearing my voice tonight. That God wants to strengthen you. God wants to tell you never to give up in that prayer. <laughs> Jesus. Oh. Now, when if you read the English translations of this Luke chapter 18, verse 1 to 8, if you look carefully, you find out that the Bible says that this, this man, this judge, decided to answer the the, the widow because he doesn't want to be wear down. <laughs> he doesn't want this woman to take life out from, out from him. If you look at Luke chapter 18 verse 5, the, the New International Version says, 
Yet, because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. New Living Translation says, But this woman is driving me crazy. And I am going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant request. English in Standard Version says, Yet, because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so that she will not bother me down by her constant coming. <laughs> oh, this house. Then King James Version says, Yet, because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she, she makes me weary. That is one thing the Bible is talking about. That the king had to answer, the judge had to answer this woman because this woman was not willing to give up. <laughs> if it means taking life out of the king, this widow was willing to do that. In other words, she refused to accept anything other than her justice, other than that answer to her request. Now, let me also tell you that in the Greek world, the, the actual translation was actually, let me answer this widow so that she will, she will not give me a black eye. Let me answer her so that she will, she, will not, she will not give me a black eye. You know what's a black eye? When you go into the boxing field and you are boxing with your, your, your opponent, and then you, you don't want the opponent to hit your eye or your eyes. Because if your opponent does that, you'll get a black eye. Your eye will turn red and then turn black. And this is telling us that this woman was willing to use petitions, persistence, to give the judge a black eye. Jesus was using this metaphor from boxing to make his point about the need to continue in prayer. Be as persistent, persistent as that boxer in the, in the ring. <laughs> That's what God is talking to us today. Now, Jesus himself is using this parable to also teach us that he himself will always answer, even though he may not answer at the time that we are expecting him to answer. If an unjust judge would answer the pleas of this widow, how much more will God in heaven, the loving God, the powerful God, how much more will he answer our own prayers? Remember the Bible says, very well, you might say, but what about unanswered prayers? You may begin to answer, ask, but brother, what about those unanswered prayers? I have been praying and praying, and God has not answered me. Fifteen years ago, I was told that I was going to have a child. The nan and brother have not even conceived, talk less of having a child. My business has not even changed. Things are even getting worse. <laughs> Jesus. But you know what I want to tell you tonight? God sees the overall plan. He knows what is best, and he will bring it to perfection. I should continue to wait on the Lord. The Lord will surely answer. Let, let me just share this story with you. I remember so many years ago, um, I think this was in the 90s, about or early 20, 20s, and this lady, you know, she was very prayerful. And I was always praying with her all the time. And she kept saying, Brother Walker, I have not seen him. I have not seen a man to marry me. No more have come to tell me I want to marry you. Sometimes when they come, something happens on the way, and it will not work out. And you know what? One day God just spoke to her. And God told her something that, that taught me a lesson. God told this lady, he said, all the prayers you do, I hear them and I answer you. But I use those prayers to do what is more important than you getting married. <laughs> so when you think that God is not answering, no. As far as that prayer is good, as far as it is a prayer that, that is it, that God has approved, that a prayer that pleases God, I tell you that God already answered. But most times he answers us in a way we do not expect. God went for to tell this lady 
that do you see in your family that is crisis? I'm using that prayer to touch the heart of every member of the family so that they give their life to Christ, so that they will know me, so that there will be peace in the house. You see what God was using her prayer to do? Maybe the reason why you have not gotten that answer in the way you wanted it may be because God is using that prayer to solve some other thing that is more important in your life that you do not even know. <laughs> Jesus. My brothers and sisters, St. Luke, that we just read, demonstrated that this our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth was indeed someone of prayer, a man of prayer, and he is calling us to follow suit. He also wants us to continue to look unto him and to be people of prayer. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Huh. Remember in Luke chapter 11 verse 13, that the Bible made us understand that, that the Father will give, will, will give them what they ask. The Father will give them what they ask. That is what you ask. As far as it's in line with the Holy Spirit's plan, God will do it. In Gospel of Matthew chapter 7 verse 11, we read that the Father will give good things to those who ask. The important thing is what to pray. But what is also more important is what to persevere in prayer. So one thing is praying. Then there is another level which is called perseverance in prayer. And that is the level that God is taking all of us tonight. Many of us will come to here every night and will pray. But God wants to graduate you to the level of persevering in prayer. That is totally in prayer. Never to give up. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I know that this is that night. That God is talking to somebody. Yes. In this parable of this, the parable that we just read, you see that Jesus was teaching his people the necessity of prayer. Yes. Earlier in the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke, you see Jesus telling different parables. There was a parable he gave about a man going to his friend in the middle of the night to ask for what? To ask for bread. And even though at first that friend may not want to give that, get up to give that bread to his friend, yet his, that his friend got up and gave him the bread. This you'll find in Luke chapter 11, verse 5 to 8. So Luke, who was what Jesus, was documenting the lifestyle of Jesus. He was documenting the parables of Jesus. In fact, in one other parable, which he indicated in Luke chapter 18, verse 9 to 14, you see Jesus talking about the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. Reminding us in that parable that our prayers has to be humble. Has to be humble. My dear brothers and sisters, God is talking to us tonight. God wants us to be people of prayer. God wants us to persevere in prayer. The culture of perseverance in prayer is not what started today. It has been like that from the, from the Old Testament time. People who persevere in prayer, they saw the power of God. Elijah persevered in prayer. And you know what? God answered him with the fire. <laughs> he persevered in prayer. God answered him with even rain. God answered him with the signs and wonders. I tell you, as you persevere in prayer, God will surely show up, my people. Oh, Jesus. Yes, my Lord. So we see the importance of prayer in the life of the child of God. God is talking to us tonight. I tell you something. If you, if you go through the, the Old Testament, especially in the book of Exodus, you see the, the ministry of Moses. Moses was an intercessor. He was always praying. He never gave up praying. He was always there, all the time praying. Now, there was something the Bible talked about in Exodus chapter 17, verse 8 to 13. The Bible also understand that Moses held up his arms. He lifted up his arms, which was a gesture of prayer. And as long as Moses held that his arms up in prayer, everything was going on well. The people of Israel, they were now winning the enemy. There was a time that the hand of Moses tried to weary. A time he tried to, he, he, he started getting weak. You know how you feel when you lift up your hands for a long time? 
you at the time you you feel like bringing it on your hand and so god had to come Aaron said, Aaron, go and help Moses. Help him to hold up his hand so that his hand will be up. For as soon as surely as his hand is up, so surely there shall be victory. <laughs> Jesus. So I pray that you may understand what the significance of the hands of Moses being up. That, the, that is signifying perseverance, persistence, persistence in prayer. Perseverance in prayer. <clears throat> As far as he continued to lift that land up, there was victory. And I tell you the same thing for you. That as far as you continue to persevere in that prayer and never given up, that you will have victory in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I think we can also see Moses holding up his arms in prayer, in anticipating Christ, holding up his arms in prayer on the cross. When Christ held up his hands, when he spread out those hands on the cross, it was an answer prayer. Mm-hmm. Mama. There was an answer prayer. Mama. He lifted it up. They used nail to hit him there. They used nail to latch that the, those hands, to lift that, those hands up. But what the enemy does not know is that by their wickedness, they were actually lifting the hand of Jesus so that he would be in control to be in prayer. See, today, Jesus is praying for you, that you shall be with you. And he's teaching us today to do the same thing, to people of prayer. Huh. So anytime we see the cross, anytime we look at the crucifix, and we see the Lord stretching forth his hand and nail to the cross, I tell you, it is a sign to you that Jesus is still praying. That the Lord is still praying. He is still praying for peace in the world. Look at what is happening in the world today. If you turn television, if you turn the media, if you look at the newspaper, no, no more good news, brother. No more good news. It's all troubles. It's all crisis. It's all mass murder. It's all holocaust. Oh, my God. Look at what is happening. But Jesus is still praying. And he is looking for intercessors. People like Moses. That their hands will be lifted up in prayer. People that will persevere in prayer. I don't know if you are that person. Oh, Jesus. I remember Exodus chapter 22, verse 30. And the Bible says, I am looking for somebody who will stand in the gap. Who will stand in the gap and pray so that the people shall be saved. Are you that person tonight? Maybe you are going to lift up your hand tonight. In the name of Jesus. Like Moses, we shall lift up our hands in prayer. Praying and persevering in prayer. And God will answer us. And let me tell you something. When Jesus lifted those two hands up on the cross of Calvary, the enemy thought that it was over. But you know what? That was the symbol of winning. That was the symbol of an overcomer. That is the overcomer symbol. Lifting up hands is for those who, who persevere in prayer. For those who are meant to be winners. That is for the winning winners. People who are who are persisted in prayer. As Jesus lifted up his hands on the cross of Calvary, Jesus, then he won the battle. He won the battle over evil. He won the battle over sin. He won the battle over the kingdom of darkness. He lifted his hands up. And he's inviting you and me today to do the same thing. Jesus never gave up. He never gave up praying. Even on the cross of Calvary, he was praying. Day and night, he was praying. Jesus lived all his life praying. Anytime you, anywhere you see him going, he was praying. And even while on the cross, because he was a man of prayer, he continued to pray. He was interceding. He was praying, say, Father, forgive them. He, every moment of his life was all prayer. He never left prayer. <clears throat> Jesus. So the secret of Jesus was prayer. Prayer is very important in the life of a child of God. St. Luke, in his gospel, took time to explain about the life of Jesus as per his life of prayer. <laughs> if you take time to look at, to read the book of Luke, you will see that he was talking deeply about the prayer life of Jesus. Remember Luke chapter 11 verse 1. Then the disciples said, teach us how to pray. You know why? Because they saw Jesus every time he was praying. They would wake up from sleep and they would see Jesus kneeling down praying. Say, Father, teach us how to pray. Then in verse 2, he said to teach them the prayer, the popular prayer called our Father who art in heaven. You see how he started? 
Somebody ask Jesus, teach me how to pray. <laughs> in Luke's gospel, gospel, we see Jesus in prayer in all the time, never giving up. Obviously, prayer is the key. <laughs> There's no child of God that can survive this life without prayer. Prayer was very important in the ministry of Jesus. Prayer was central in the life of Jesus. And you know what? Prayer ought to be central in our own lives also. <laughs> Jesus. Luke chapter 3 verse 21 made us understand that Jesus was praying after his baptism when the heaven opened. He was praying. After the cure of the leper, Jesus withdrew to the wilderness and did what? He prayed. That was in Luke chapter 5 verse 16. In Luke chapter 6, verse 12 to 16, Jesus spent all night on the hills in prayer, persevering in prayer before he chose the 12 disciples. Take note. Take note, my people. That before he chose the 12 disciples, Jesus spent all night. The Bible said he spent all night, night vigil, praying to select the right people to work with him. He was crying to his father all night. He may have been praying on the cold, but the cold could not make him to give up. He continued to persevere. Why, why, why was it that he didn't pray, pray one hour and give up? Because he had to persevere until he would hear the voice of his father. Telling him, choose Matthew, choose Jude, choose John, choose Luke, and so on and so forth. We need to pray before we get into business, before we get into issues in life. Do you pray before you get into that business, before you get into that career? Before you get into telling that man, yes, or that woman, yes, in marriage, do you pray? <laughs> Jesus. Many people don't even consider prayer. When you pray, then you are inviting God into that very event, and he will take over. The mistake that many of us make is that we don't pray, and we get into Things that we, we start to regret down the line. The children of God have to be people of prayer. And also people that will persevere in prayer. It surprises me, really, that, in the, that the, the worldly people, they really know how to endure in getting what they want. You, you are planning... Giving your business to be a good one, you plan option A. It fails, you plan for option B. You don't give up until you see that business succeed. You invest your time, your energy, your resources in that business. But when it comes to prayer, we give up. If we spend more than one and a half hours, oh, brother, why are you taking much time this time? <laughs> Jesus. Perseverance will win you your life, so says the scripture. I, I many of you may know about a man called Thomas Edison. I mean, he was not a spiritual man, but he was in the scientific world. And I want to use him to describe what I mean by saying that the people of the world knows how to endure in pursuing a target. The man who invented the light bulb, the electric light bulb we use today, that was Thomas Edison. You know what? He went through over 10,000 prototypes of this so-called electric bulb today. He went through over 10,000 prototypes before he got the right one. He kept failing, failing. He persevered. He kept failing 10,000 times. There was one of his 
uh, sayings that says, I have not failed. I have just found 10,000 ways that won't work. <laughs> that was Thomas Edison. Failure taught Edison to repeatedly innovate. If he, had, if he hadn't failed, Thomas Edison might not have become America's uh, most well-known and prolific inventor. <laughs> you see that? If the world would know how to persevere in pursuing a project, the children of the kingdom of God should know better. See how we persevere in academics. Even when we fail exam, we we'll still retake it again. We we'll spend nights in preparing an exam. We persevere. But when it comes to prayer, why do we not do the same thing? Jesus is talking to us today. To be people, not only of prayer, but people who persevere in prayer. The Bible says in, that Jesus was praying alone when he asked the disciples, what or who do people say that I am? You know that popular question that, that Jesus asked his disciples in Luke chapter 9, verse 18 to 22. Who do people say that I am? It was, Jesus was praying alone when he asked that question. Eight days later, he took Peter, James, and John, and they went up on the mountain to do what? To pray in Luke chapter 9, verse 28. He was never tired of praying. He was always persevering in prayer. While praying on that mountain table, he transfigured, according to Luke chapter 9, verse 29. You see again, he's, he, Jesus persevering in prayer. <laughs> Jesus, he never gave up. He never gave up. My dear people of God, God is talking to us to imitate him. Jesus, in Luke chapter 22, verse 32, prayed for Simon that his faith might not fail. Only Luke tells that Jesus prayed for his crucifiers in Luke chapter 23, verse 34. He was praying for those who was crucifying him. You see, can you see that kind of that kind of man? <laughs> that was that was this song that says, "What man, what manner of man is Jesus?" Hallelujah. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. Is it you were crucifying him, but he was he praying? That is teaching us that even in our crisis, even in our troubles. Even when things were falling upside down, we have to pray. Persevere and pray. Even pray for our enemies. Pray for those who crucify us or who are crucifying us. In Luke chapter 23, verse 46, as he died, committing his spirit into his father, he was also praying. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. Unto your hands I commend my spirit. Praying. Is ours. Oh, huh. my dear brothers and sisters, if you look at the Acts of Apostles, you see the activities of people who were with Jesus, who saw that Jesus was praying, who saw that Jesus' strength was coming from prayer. And uh, those people, otherwise called the disciples of Jesus, the apostles of Jesus, they were now praying, imitating Jesus in prayer. In other apostles, you see the church, the praying church, the church at prayer, the church as a praying ministry. They were fasting and they were praying. In Acts 13, verse 2, you see how they were fasting and praying. And the signs and wonders followed them. Perseverance in prayer. Not even the tribulation they were passing through could deter them. They continued to pray. They never gave up. Jesus. Oh, my dear people of God. God, indeed, is talking to us tonight. I remember that the Acts of Apostles has 28 chapters. These 20, those 28 chapters contain the activities of the, 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 the apostles of Jesus. The 29th chapter could be your own story. That 30th chapter will be Mr. A's story. Jesus wants to use us. 
to showcase his power on earth. When we pick the scripture and we start praying according to the scripture, then the power of God will move. You see great things happening. That is, that is the power that God is releasing to you tonight. Persevere in prayer. Pick up the scripture. Pick up the Bible. And you see that God himself has given us great treasure in our hands. Even when you are praying the rosary, that's actually scriptural prayer. The life of Jesus. Meditating the life of Jesus. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, that all scriptures, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness. So that one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. Mm -hmm. How many times do you keep this, pick the Bible? You have to pick the Bible. Remember, this is a Bible-believing prayer line. <laughs> and every day, we share the Bible in this prayer line. We give the Bible to read for the next day. If you follow those references, you will surely grow. You will surely understand the power of prayer. And you, you know what? You will be stronger than ever. Because the word of God is power. You look at when the enemy came to tempt Jesus. <laughs> they convert this stone to bread. And Jesus told him, it is written. In each of the cases, Jesus told the, told the enemy, it is written. Jesus was quoting the scripture. Jesus was praying, rebuking the enemy using the scripture. And he defeated the enemy. When you persevere, when you reflect in the word of God, and I tell you, when you speak the word of God to the enemy, the enemy will tremble. You, you, he will become defeated. So this is very important, my people of God, that we have to reflect on the word of God. And we have to do what? To persevere in prayer. One of the greatest saints of the church, St. Jerome, he said, ignorance of the scripture is ignorance of Christ. I repeat, ignorance of the scriptures is ignorance of Christ. If you don't know the Bible, then you don't know Jesus. Period. Jesus. So when we use the sacred scripture, then we are, we, are, we are bringing down the power of God. We are feeding our lives with the power of God. Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, God himself has spoken to us tonight. I don't know where this message to this night has taught you, but this is a time to pray. A time to ask God, make me a man of prayer. Make me a man of prayer like Daniel. Make me a man of prayer like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Make me a man of prayer such that situations will never alter my, my prayer. So that situations will not even change my focus on you. Oh, can you open your mouth and pray that prayer? And say, Lord, give me the spirit of prayer, the spirit of David, the spirit of Daniel, the spirit of Shadrach, Kimishak, and Abednego, that spirit that you put in them, or I put in that spirit in me, so that even if I am threatened with a fire, I will not give up, for I know that you will be the fourth man in the fire. Father, you did it for Daniel, you did it for Shadrach, Kimishak, and Abednego. Father, and I know you will do it for me, in the name of Jesus. In Daniel chapter 3, O God, you did it for Shadrach, Kimishak, and Abednego. Oh, Jesus, that even when they were put into the lake of fire, Father, you protected them because they persevered in prayer. Jesus, Father, even in Daniel chapter 6, Daniel was put in the lion's den. Father, you delivered him because all night he persevered in prayer. And the lion that came to destroy him wouldn't destroy him because he persevered in prayer. Father, teach me the culture of prayer, the culture of perseverance in prayer. Open your mouth and pray now. Call upon Jesus. Call upon Jesus. Jesus. Pray now, pray now, pray now, pray now. Ask him to strengthen your prayer life. Ask him to make you a man of prayer. A woman of prayer. The Bible talked about a woman called Esther. Esther was a woman of prayer. She persevered in prayer. She never gave up in prayer. She swore, ah, I will continue to fast and pray. 
until my people are delivered, until the whole Jews are delivered, and she got her favor because she persevered in prayer. Who tells you that God will not do the same thing for you? Open your mouth and pray now. Call upon Jesus. Call upon him now. Call upon the King of Glory. He will answer you. He will answer you. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, pray now, pray now, pray now. As you persevere in prayer, you will never sink. In the name of Jesus, as you persevere in prayer, you will be unthinkable. In the name of Jesus, that cancer will not destroy me because I am persevering in prayer. In the name of Jesus, pray now, pray now, pray now. Jesus, Jesus, pray, 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 pray. Call on him, call on him. Ask him to make you a man of prayer, a woman of prayer. Somebody that perseveres in prayer. In the name of Jesus, I will never give up. I will never give up. In the name of Jesus, 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 ask him to give you a food for the strength, a food to be a man of prayer. There is a food for people of prayer. Hey, Jesus, Elijah ate that food. He ate that food while he was in the wilderness, where he was crying and said, God, kill me. And I said, enough is enough. I don't want to live again. And God told him, my friend, it seems you are hungry. Now, get that food. God commanded the ravens of the air to bring him food, to bring him water. He drank water, he ate the food, and God told him, eat again, he ate again. God told him, for the journey you are going is a long one. You need a prayer to get to that journey. And he continued to eat. And I'm praying tonight for you, that you shall eat the food of the Spirit. The food of the Spirit. The food that makes somebody to travel in prayer. The food that makes somebody never to give up. In the name of Jesus. Jesus never give up. Therefore, I never give up. In the name of Jesus. Oh, pray, my time, pray now. Jesus. Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. I will come out of this situation. I will come out of this situation. As I persevere in the Lord. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Psalm 46 verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Oh, Jesus. I don't know who had that message. Be still and know that I am God. Oh, Yahandara Baba. Pray now, pray now. The hour has come. The hour to transform you. The hour to inject into your body a divine juice, a divine power, a divine power. To empower you in the name of Jesus. Let the Lord threaten you in the name of Jesus. Ask Him to make you a person of prayer. Somebody that will persevere in prayer in the name of Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Let my rank begin to change now. Let my rank begin to change now so that I will grow from ordinary Christian to extraordinary Christian, from praying Christian to persevere to a Christian that. Praise with the perseverance. In the name of Jesus. Aha. Pray now, pray now, pray now. Pray for spiritual growth. Pray for spiritual growth. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Pray now, pray now, pray now. No more drinking milk. No more drinking milk. No more drinking milk in the spirit. But from now, I will begin to chew the strong meat of the spirit. In the name of Jesus. The strong meat of the spirit. This is for mature Christians. I am maturing tonight. My Lord and my Father. Help me to mature. Help me to be strong. Help me to be rugged in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Jesus. Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. In the name of Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. My Lord and my Father, strengthen your people. In the name of Jesus. Give me the grace to grow in my sweet faith. Father, give me the grace to grow, to grow, to grow in grace, to grow in purity, to grow in holiness. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray now to grow in the knowledge of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, pray now, pray now, pray now. Oh, my Kandaraba, pray, 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 pray. Make me extraordinary. Make me extraordinary. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray now. Ask God to give you the garment of prayer. The garment of prayer. The garment of prayer. The garment of prayer. I receive that garment. I receive that garment. The garment of prayer. The garment of prayer. After this uh, prayer, I shall be a prayer warrior. After this uh, prayer, I will become dangerous. I will become high voltage. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Pray now, pray now, pray now. Jesus. Jesus. Enough is enough. I will never be a baby Christian again. I refuse to be a baby Christian. I want to be a strong Christian. A mature Christian. In the name of Jesus. The Christian that knows his God. The Christian that knows his God. According to Daniel 11, 32. And the Bible says, So the Christians, they shall do exploits. In the name of the Lord. Oh, Jesus. Pray now, pray now, pray now. Call upon him now. Call upon him now. In the name of
name of Jesus. I refuse to be a sweet babe. I refuse to be a sweet baby. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to be unskilled in the word of God. I refuse to be unskilled in the word of God. That from today, I will be eating the word of God like food. In the name of Jesus. Ha! Pray now, pray now, pray now. Jesus. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Pray now, pray now, pray now. Oro Baba Shereba. Oro Makanda Raba. My Lord and my Father, I pray you send me your word. Let me be rooted in Christ. Make me to be rooted in you. According to Colossians 2 verse 7. Make me to be rooted in you. In the name of Jesus. Let my prayer be rooted in you. In the name of Jesus. Pray now, pray now, pray now. In the name of Jesus, I am planted by the rivers of water, that I shall bear fruit in my prayer life. Every day, I shall bear fruit. Oh, Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. My people pray now. Call upon him, call upon him. In the name of Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. My top fruit is going down. My top fruit is going down. Going down into Jesus. Going down into Jesus. My spiritual top fruit, my spiritual top fruit is going down. Is going deeper, is going deeper, deeper in Christ, deeper in Christ. I am anchoring on the cross. I am anchoring on the rock, on the rock. I am unshakable. I am unshakable because my taproot is going down into the rock, the rock of Jesus. Jesus is the rock. Pray now, pray now, pray now. Let my prayer, Makara Baba, become stronger than ever. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, as my root is going down, as my root is going down, as my top root is going down, I am drawing life. I am drawing life. Drawing life from Jesus. Drawing life from Jesus. I am drawing life. I am tapping life. Tapping life from Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Aha! The Bible tells me in John chapter 15 verse 1 that Jesus is the vine. John chapter 15 verse 5, I am the branch of the vine. But today, I am the root of the vine. For my root is going down. My root is going down into the rock to draw life, to draw nutrients, divine nutrients that will make me to be prayerful. In the name of Jesus, oh, pray, I'm to pray now. Call upon him, call upon him, call upon him. Jesus, Jesus. I want to be unshakable, unshakable Christian, firebrand Christian, firebrand Christian, firebrand Christian, in the name of Jesus, wind shall not blow me out of my faith, in the name of Jesus, yes my Lord, Jesus, Jesus, my faith, my faith, will never depend on my circumstances, in the name of Jesus, my faith will never depend on the wind that you blow in, my faith will never depend on the business atmosphere, my faith will never depend on the economy, in the name of Jesus, my faith will depend on the economy of Jesus, on the word of Jesus, on the promises of Jesus, hey, Jesus, my people pray now, call upon him now, pray, 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 call upon Jesus, yeah, upon Jesus, Yes, 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 yes. Let my top foot go down and then draw life from Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. As you pray that prayer, you are going to grow. You are going to grow. See, sweeter growth. I declare now, sweeter growth, my people. Let my people pray. Let my people be strong. Pray now, pray now, pray now. Pray that you shall be a man of prayer, a prayer warrior. Oh, Reba Shereba. Pray, 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 pray. People have to pray like Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the morning, I shall be prayerful. In the afternoon, even in the night, while I'm even sleeping, I will be praying. In the name of Jesus, in my dreams, I will be praying. I will be praising God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. In the name of Jesus. 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 Yes, 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 yes. Call on him now. I want to build a stronger relationship with you. In the name of Jesus. Father, in this moment of fasting and prayers, make me strong in you. Let my root grow strong in you. Let me have a deeper personal relationship with you. In the name of Jesus. That nothing shall make me to take signs apart from the side of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Jesus. Jesus. And the Bible says, Philippians 3 verse 10, that I shall know him and the power of the resurrection. Open your mouth and pray now. Let the power of the resurrection come upon you now. Come upon you now. Come upon you now. 
down. Receive that power. Receive that power. Receive that power. Overcome us anointing. Overcome us anointing. He coming upon you. He coming upon you. Receive it now. The Bible says, First John chapter 5 verse 4, Whosoever is born of God, overcome the world. From today, I overcome the world. I overcome anxiety. In the name of Jesus. Ah! Oh, Jesus, every power, every trouble that wants to make me to lose my faith, to lose my prayer life, I cancel you now. I cancel you now. Come out of me and burn by fire. In the name of Jesus, come out of me now. Come out of my children. Come out of my family and go to fire and go to abyss. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, from today, I am prayer warrior. From today, I shall persevere in prayer. In the name of Jesus, sickness will not make me to lose focus in prayer. Anxiety will not make me to lose faith in prayer. In the name of Jesus, even my unanswered prayers shall not make me to lose faith in prayer. My barrenness, my ungodly worry, every heaviness of spirit, every spirit of sorrow, spirit of depression, spirit of oppression, spirit of repression, you must not make me to lose my joy, to lose my prayer culture. In the name of Jesus, today I claim my anointing. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, pray now, pray now, pray now. Jesus, Jesus, yes, 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 yes. Make me a man of prayer. Make me a winner. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, make me fire. Ask him to make you a fire. Oh, Jesus, make me a fire, Holy Ghost. Make me a fire. Hey, make me a fire, Holy Ghost. Make me a fire, oh, make me a fire, Jesus. Make me a fire, make me a fire, Holy Ghost. Make me a fire, make me a fire, Holy Ghost. 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 Make me a fire. Make us a fire, Holy Ghost. Make us a fire, oh. Make us consuming fire, Lord. Make us a fire, Holy Ghost. Make me a fire, Holy Ghost. Make me a fire, Holy Ghost. Make me a fire, Holy Ghost. Make us a fire. Huh? Jesus. Fire, make us a fire. Make us to be moving fire. People that are persevering in prayer, they graduate into fire. Jesus. The Bible says in Isaiah 40, verse 31, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagle. They will run and never grow weary. They will work and never be faint. You know why? Because they persevere on the Lord. They persevere in prayer. These are people who persevere in prayer. They are the people that the Lord renewed their strength. The world might think that, oh, this person is wasting his time. But the Lord is re- re- renewing the strength of the righteous. <laughs> it's us. The Lord is saying, I have promised many blessings to those who wait on me. He, one of the ble- blessings is he shall renew their strength. He shall renew your strength. The strength to wait on the Lord comes from the Lord. The strength to persevere in prayer comes from the Lord. <laughs> Jesus. Hmm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. No matter the circumstances, you will see trust in the Lord because you have the grace to persevere. The Lord is looking for such people tonight. Jesus. People that will live above their circumstances. 
That's what the Bible talks about when the Bible says in Isaiah 40, verse 31 b It said they will soar on their wings like eagle. The eagle will fly into the high sky, into the high altitude. There it will make a nest. No snake comes to that place. That height is for people like eagle. <laughs> At that height, the eagle looks down and sees the enemy. The enemy cannot touch the eagle. <laughs> the eagle will fly over the troubles, over the mountains, over the oceans, but they will never get drowned. In other words, the Bible is saying that those who wait upon the Lord, those who persevere in prayer, their lives shall not be determined by their circumstances. In other words, they shall live above their circumstances. There shall be what is called resurgence of hope. Resurgence of hope. <laughs> it's ours. The presence of the Lord will continually be with them. Because they wait on the Lord. <laughs> Waiting on the Lord enables us to glorify God by living in deep dependence on Him. Ready to do His will all the time. It's ours. When people are losing joy, not for the man that puts his trust in the Lord. Not for the man that perseveres in prayer. <laughs> let, let me share this experience with you before we come to an end of this ministration. Many years ago, I remember, I many of you may know that I looked for a job for eight years. Eight solid years after graduation. And I was crying day and night. I said, God, what is wrong? What is happening to me? And he said, I am preparing you for use in the future. Now, but there was a particular day. The Lord showed me a very mighty tree. When I say mighty tree, that tree cannot be found in this world. A tree that its branches could cover over 1,000 hectares of land. One single tree. And they behold, this, this tree fell down. And I, I saw people from different parts of the world. I saw different races. They came to that tree to come and harvest it. And I came too to harvest from that tree. I saw people get, cutting the branches and living. I saw people taking leaves and living. People take different portions of that tree. Now, this is figurative. Definitely, the leaves, the branches, these are all blessings. Okay? Maybe the leaf could mean child. Maybe the branch could mean a, a corporation. God give you a corporation, a big company. Okay? So, I came there to grab the branch, to cut it off. And I saw a mighty man wearing white or true and he came to me he said follow me i followed him we came to the root of that uh that is the stem of that big tree and he told me something he said do you see that this tree has been cut down and he told me yes i mean i told him yes then he told me that this tree, even though it has cut down, and the whole world has come to harvest it, but another one will grow. I was said, he said, another one will grow, but it will be meant only for you, and then no person will come and share that with you. And he said, my son, but you have to persevere on Till it germinates and grows. God was talking about perseverance. God was talking about perseverance to me. And I don't know whether this message I had years ago, whether it makes meaning to you. I also remember one of that revelation I had some months after that, this one I shared. And that revelation, I came to a mighty building. When I say mighty building, I mean I couldn't see the end of that building. And there's only one entrance to that building. 
You enter from the side of the altar. I entered. <laughs> and the, I looked at the altar. The man I saw was Jesus sitting down on the throne at the altar. I saw uncountable people wearing white all through. I mean, if I said I saw one million people, that would not be enough. I mean, it was mighty place with people wearing white all through. And all of them were bowing to the king, Jesus. And when I saw Jesus, I said, oh, look at Jesus. And then he walked, he stood up and walked to me. As he was walking down the the, 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 the staircase of the altar, the altar had a kind of a stake, you know, a staircase. And then I was wondering what he was coming to do with me. At the moment he stood up, the whole millions of people stood up as if to say, who are we to sit down while our king is standing up? And I saw Jesus walking towards me. You know, you know how you feel. You know that when somebody is coming to you, even though you are walking to some other direction, but you know that person is coming to you, and you don't want to walk out of that person. You need to, you know, start uh, walking towards that person as a mark of respect. So I was now walking to the Lord, wondering, what, what does He want to do? And I saw Him smiling, and He came. He hugged me, and I, I busted into tears. I was wondering, how, who am I that the Lord shall hug me? Then, somebody was asking, among those crowd, one person was asking a question, who is this man that our master gave this kind of honor? And what the reply was what amazed me. See, this was the man that he told us he stood years ago. I was listening to their conversation. The day, do you remember the day our Lord, our Master called us for a meeting, and He told us of one soul in in in, in the world that was undergoing several tribulations, but that He persevered. But today, our Master has come to to pay Him, like, like to bless Him, to give Him a recompense. And then I could remember when Jesus gave me an envelope. So this is an envelope for your perseverance. I saw the millions of people giving me envelopes, white envelopes. And I said, this is our, our support, our, our way of saying good job for your faith in the Lord. But, but you know what? Even I had this privilege to see these things. And you may not have that privilege. But one thing I want to tell you, that the Lord sees you. The Lord sees you. Sister, wipe your tears. The Lord sees you. I am praying that this message of this night will go down into our bone marrows and they bring us into the state of persevering in prayer. Never to give up. Never to give up, but to depend on Jesus. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for the message of this night. We glorify your name. We lift your name high above every name. May your name be glorified. May the message of this night take us from extraordinary Christian life to, to super extraordinary in the name of Jesus. May the prayer of this night make those who are smoke in the spiritual realm. Let them become firebrand Christians in the name of Jesus. People who are at the level of 120 volts in the spiritual realm. Father, through his prayer, let them become high voltage, dangerous in the spiritual realm. That no evil shall cause their path. Because they will imbibe the culture of prayer through your ministry. The ministry of prayer. The ministry of Jesus. May God be glorified in our lives. In the name of the Father and of the Son 